If we're going to be creating more energy efficient buildings, working our way toward a carbon neutral future, we've got to start using tools that will allow us to analyze buildings early on in the design process to help inform the decisions we make. That brings us to Autodesk Insight 360. My name is Joe Eikensir with Imaginate Technologies and this is a little, a little bit of a peek behind the curtain to what is Insight 360. As I just mentioned, it's a tool to help us derive different outcomes that are positive based off of understanding how the building is going to perform, working through any number of different workflows, using incredibly accurate tools like Energy Plus to help drive calculations, to help drive information for our decisions. It's a web-based tool using the Autodesk Cloud, meaning that it's going to be giving us feedback very, very quickly, not tying up our own workstations to get things done. Now, how do we get to Insight 360? Well, if you've got Formit Pro, if you've got Revit on subscription, you have access to Insight 360. It's a tool, it's waiting for you to use. All you need to do is either click on a button or download an add-in and you're there. So take it, use it. It's good information for us to make our buildings better. You know, why do this? Well, in the past, if you've been going through processes to analyze a building to figure out what's going to be the heating and cooling loads, what's the insulation values of certain surfaces of the building. There's all sorts of things that can happen, but it's taken time. It goes through a lot of detailed data entry, a lot of very talented, highly skilled people that have got to go through and do it. And yeah, it can be a time-consuming, expensive thing to do. Yeah, there are places where it might not cost much, but it, it's really not been a, a place where most people have willingly gone to try and figure out how their building is going to perform and what could happen in the building's construction or design to make it better. Well, with the Autodesk 360 Insight method, we've got a fast, easy way to be able to allow anybody to investigate various options, to go ahead and roll through different levels of comparative analysis to understand what's happening. Comparative analysis allows us to compare different building forms with each other to understand you know, what's going to be the, the cost to run a building with different form factors, with different construction types. You know, as we see in the picture in the bottom right hand corner, what happens if we change out the lights, the light types, increase the efficiency of light? What's that do to the cost for running and managing our building? That is the purpose. Be behind Inside 360. Now let's take a look at how it really works within some of these picks and clicks. So how does Inside 360 do this? Well, we have to start with some sort of a building form. So whether we're talking about modeling in Autodesk Revit or going into Format 360, we come up with a basic building form, hopefully early on during massing stages where we can start making some important decisions and pushing the building in certain directions, take that building shape, and give it a location. Once we've got a location set, we can start analyzing the building based off of the actual climate data for where the building will be. Generating the insight will allow the Autodesk Cloud to go through and start making hundreds and thousands and potentially millions of different calculations to understand what's happening with the building and what sort of reactions will happen if we change things about the building. So once we have this model, we generate the insight it's a matter of coming over and saying, well, let's evaluate that insight. Whether it's evaluating multiple forms of a building to understand which shape might be the best optimal square footage footprint of something that we're looking at the building. How does each shape apply to photovoltaic potential? But taking any of these, looking at that information, and evaluating what's going on. As we're going through, insight will allow us uh, range of understanding what sort of costs do we have for you know, heating and cooling this building over its life over the course of a year and that applies to a scale that leans us towards ASHRAE and the 2030 challenge where are we relative to those items and what can we do to try and get a little bit better as we're investigating this model you know, what happens if I make more efficient lights well let's take a look at that the current model, the, as it is inside 
the defaults that came over from the BIM, in this case coming from Formit, you know, not bad, but what if we were to take that and make it a little bit better? Just take this range down to account for a little bit more efficient lighting. You know, we're dropping sometimes dramatically, sometimes less dramatically, but we're getting better performance out of our building. And this is where we get to start experiencing things of saying, well, what's the cost-benefit analysis of going to a much more efficient system? So we're down to about 13.8. There's a range that we're in here, so it could be as low as 4.37, could be something as high as 37, but this is a range of most likely getting to this 13.8 based off of the multitude of calculations that are happening on behind the scenes. If we're looking at the operating schedule, this is currently set up to be a 24-7 building. Well, that might not be the case of what we're looking at for this particular system. So it's, we'll say it's going to be a office building. It's most likely going to be a 12-6. So we'll drop that in for what it's going to be and continue working from here to get those next pieces. And it's a matter of just taking each one of these different tiles and evaluating what's it going to be. You know, right here we can see that, you know, there's the default HVAC system that we've got in here is pretty decent in the overall range. Would I gain much by making it that much better than it is already? No, but by adjusting my scale here, you'll notice that this range that we have of possible outcomes is narrower. As we start defining things, the possibilities of what we're going to be, what we can achieve, become closer and closer to a single value based off of, again, what are we doing with the building? What's going to be the window to wall ratio for various components of this building? There were defaults that were built into here, but you know what is it gonna be for us right now? Right here, we've got a range where we're saying about 41%. Well, if we know we're not gonna be any more than that, then we can go ahead and drop that down. All of a sudden, our color changed because we're closer to getting to that ASHRAE or 2030 goal. So we can see here now we're just below ASHRAE 90.1. If we keep on working our way through, it's a matter of identifying what we have and what we can do inside this building. Daylighting and occupancy controls, you know, what's it cost for us to get those occupancy controls? Is it worth it for us to do that for the energy savings that we get out of this part of the building? And within each of these, we can start taking the, the different components, identifying which ones make a large impact, which ones maybe don't make that much of an impact, and adjust it accordingly. From these results, take them all together and save it as what we have called a scenario. So we can start comparing different options together. So this untitled scenario, I'll call this uh, something like uh, adjusting lighting. And now that's a scenario I can use to compare what, what variations can I try just by going through and changing some of these tiles out to better understand what's going on. And then from here, turn around and saying, well, what are my heating and cooling loads looking like for the various levels of this building? And understanding and maybe taking this information and sending it back to you know, the owners that you're working with, other people that are stakeholders in the building to better understand what is happening? You know, this is an area of the building that will be getting a little bit less sun, so we've got less heating and cooling to worry about than other areas. You know, the green spots are, you know, not so bad. Red spots, worry about it. It, it becomes something that's easy for people to understand, but let's work it a little bit further. Taking all those items, and this is just one possible scenario, one possible insight for one building form, and comparing them against each other. If we start optimizing all of these different items, what works out best? What are the things we need to be concerning ourselves with as we're looking at the best possible way to, to build this building, to construct this building? From an easy overall massing environment like what we have here for this potential office building, or taking it a little bit further. If we go to something that is going to be comparing what did we see from a general massing environment to what are we seeing now that we've got a fully detailed out Revit model of the building? How do they compare? How accurate were we with our assumptions early on to where we're making more finite changes later? This is what Insight 360 is all about. This is taking all of what we can do to the next level. And it's a tool that 
again, if you've got Format Pro, if you've got Revit on subscription, it's sitting there. It's waiting for you to use. It's part of the package of software solutions that you have in front of you that why not use it? Unpack what you've got and make our buildings better. Hopefully you'll join us when we continue to, to unpack various pieces of the toolkits that you'll have available to you, industry collections, other pieces of software that can make our buildings better, improve our built environment, be responsible for what we do as a profession.